All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our presentation. Before we even begin, I just have a quick question, and I want to see a raise of hands. Who here has gone around town and seen an abandoned building and just thought, someone's got to do something about that? Raise your hands. Come on. Everyone. <laughs> All right. So today, we are Spolia Group. We are, a, and this is our rehabilitation project. We are an investment group. So, a little bit about Spolia. It is the Latin word for repurposing building stone for new construction or decorative statues um, reused for new construction. So, a little bit about our goals. We are a for-profit organization, and we not only care about our profits, but we're going to care about the environment itself and our social ability. We care about the people and the community. For all of our future buildings, I'm talking all of them, we will have a program that encompasses the local community around it. For our first example, we're trying to get a grocery store in, and we're going to repurpose that into a, um, another uh, business. But what we want to add to it is um, programs like food literacy. For right now, we're looking at powwow, which allows people to go once a week and get um, 75 pounds of vegetables for about $12, and teach them what's good for your body, what's good for you, through our organizations. So a little bit about Scully and our team. I want everyone to say hi when I introduce you. So we have Sam. Nice to meet you. We have Brad. I'm Katie. There's Jonathan. Yeah, and Brooke. So a little bit about the research when we first started off. We looked at some of the closer areas, especially around Tucson and Phoenix, and we found out that we were in the top third bracket for highest vacancy rates in the US. So we thought that was a little surprising, but also not surprising because and business essay. So we looked into the broken window theory. Now the broken window theory is basically going down the street and seeing the broken window. Automatically you feel a little bit more <laughs> feel a little bit more confined in yourself. You know it's not the best neighborhood in the world. So that's why we wanted to look into vacancy rates and they're, how they're linked to an increase in crime rates, lower property value, and an increased risk, risk in public health. So we've noticed because of urban sprawling, box stores tend to move to the outskirts of Tucson, and specifically Vail is one of the um, newer cities that have popped up in the past few years. Um, and that's why they, Walmart wants to be the convenience. And with the public health meeting, that means being people being able to walk down the street, the walkability to go to the grocery store, walkability to go get some food necessities, or being able to have food within a radius that is acceptable and convenient to them on the way home. Um, the Tucson City Council in 2017 talked about being able to launch a 24-month pilot program that weighs uh, fees up to $5,000 with the permitting just to help rehabilitate the buildings in Tucson and have it get a little bit more um, open and livelihood feeling in um, roads. As you've noticed, Grant Road is further and further to get down into more and more abandoned buildings. So some statistics we've gone through, um, you can see in the chart right here, we've seen a decline in, or increase in stores closing, and that's because of retailers such as Amazon. We get convenient two-day shipping, and it's all there, and people really don't go to the malls anymore. There's a, about a um, 20 to 25% decrease in uh, retail spaces that are going to be closing within the next five years, and repurposing units is about 15 to 20% cheaper than a main one. So our benchmarks, they kind of represent our three tiers, which we'll talk about later. Um, these are just showing that our plan is feasible and that it can be done within uh, our ideas. So WeWorks is a modern work environment that's kind of an incubator space where people come to launch their ideas and meet with other people in the group for business to help invest in them. And then Brink is another building that was off of 6th Avenue in Tucson that was a grocery store that was repurposed into a marketing company that they just wanted to be hit with a little look in a grocery store and keep their marketing program continuing. The Arcade Province is, our, is the last one we're going to talk about. Um, they are a micro living space, so they turn an old mall that is three tiers into top two living spaces and the bottom a um, eatery and businesses to help shop. And the spaces are 200 to 400 square feet. Um, and ranging from 500 to 1,000 a month, just depending on the space and the availability. So for the first step in our uh, future plan, we're going to focus primarily on grocery stores. Oftentimes, like Sam mentioned, there's urban sprawling, and these companies will just leave their old building, 
they can they will move and develop new ones often close to where the existing one was. This leaves us with abandoned buildings that has stem structure not being used. So with these our primary focus is going to be on the incubator spaces. These will provide micro entrepreneurs which can range from the one person who runs an online company that just wants a space outside for home to come and work or smaller companies from five to 20 people. With these spaces, we're also providing an area where different companies can network, network together, give them technology that they may not be able to have at their own individual homes. Also, we're planning to target college students. These buildings are often in urban environments, near campuses, near where college kids live. And again, these spaces can provide them with technology they may not have at home, such as 3D printers, also offer other net networking, uh, opportunities with students. And one way this has been done before is Brink Marketing is actually a company in town. They took an old building that's kind of more downtown area and repurposed the inside of it, didn't touch the exterior, and running a fully functioning market starts out of it. And another way that we can use this is gyms. 44% of gym members make twenty-five to $75,000 a year. So it gives us a large market of the population to come in, provide a space that can be used, and create community involvement in this area versus just a vacant building. So this is an example of what a vacant building will look like in the tenant um, renovation industry. This is called a, a vanilla shell. So all of the buildings we purchase will be a vanilla shell, completely gutted the interior, just the exterior walls. And the picture on the right is what a new building will look like. Looks much cleaner. It is a used space where you don't have to pay to create the initial structure. We just have to renovate the inside. For the expenses, space, and development, that includes purchasing the existing building, building up new office cubicles, redoing all, all the plumbing, and just providing the basic necessities for this workspace. Personnel is going to be our on site staff, such as janitorial, some tech support on site, those types of personnel. Equipment includes desks, chairs, printers, 3D printers, broadband network. Professional consultants, that is, we're going to have a 24-7 tech service company that is outside of us, so we can have an expert handling of all those tech problems at a facility if some of us come up. Then administrative costs, that is just money we've allocated to the side for any unseen overhead costs that might come up. Tier 2, very similar to our Tier 1 problem, just it is focused on industrial buildings, so much larger spaces. So far, they're the three Fs. It's fun, fitness, and food. An example of this is the Autobahn downtown. We took an old industrial building, now have a fully functioning entertainment industry. And our plan with this is not just to create one central building in Tucson, but come up with a system that could be used nationwide to take these old industrial spaces and say, hey, this platform works, we can solve the problem having these vacant buildings by doing this. And then the expense sheet for this, um, personnel, equipment are very similar, obviously it's a bit larger space, so we're going to need a little bit more equipment, such as plumbing, more offices, just larger space is going to require a bit more, more capital, pressure consultants, same setup as tier one, just to get a larger space, we need more coding, a bit more loops to jump through when purchasing buildings of this size. So uh, then we're going to have our tier three, and our tier three is going to kind of be um, when we kind of have our setup, what we think about. We have a kind of tier one, tier two, and tier three. Or your tier one is going to kind of be your base model if you do want to start to get invested with us, kind of your entry level. Not going to be as high of capital initially. Also, going to be a lot less stress than if you go into your tier two or in your tier three. So, with our tier three, we want to tie into um, taking over those malls, like Sam said earlier. Uh, not as many people are going into malls, not as pe many people are just kind of walking around going into those shops. They're all doing everything online because you can ship it to your house in two days through Amazon. So, what we want to do is uh, try to change how we look at malls instead of having it to where it's just retail and then also food on the same uh, small like, mall community, um, making it into an extended stay. So whether or not this is a four day uh, extended stay where you're traveling from DC to Orlando and you need somewhere to live for four days for a business meeting, or if you're doing four months and you're doing uh, hurricane help with uh, anywhere down, down kind of south, 
that you can move in there for four months and instead of having a hotel room where somebody's always coming in and cleaning for you, you're having your own more homey feeling. Uh, another thing that we were trying to tie into um, is also single individuals. So whether or not that's in a college town, kind of the studio style uh, living rooms to where you're not having a whole lot of uh, investors, or not necessarily investors, but people like living with you to where they would basically in the end like ruin your house, everybody's kind of had that bad roommate story. So living on your own, having that single um, style of living. Um, then from there, after we get out of our tiers, we're going to talk about our advisory board. So on our advisory board, we're going to have a lawyer, and uh, we had talked to Andy Hancock. Basically what he's going to do for us is he would kind of help us with all the legality sides of when you go through and talk through uh, whether or not people are inside kind of pulling out of our buildings and then also swooping in and trying to leave without paying us fully. Uh, then we have a real estate agent, Kathy Garbosh. She's going to make sure we're getting a fair market price for all the properties we buy. Uh, McLean and Sons is going to be our licensed contractor that we trust. And then last would be uh, Bella Heath, who's our community advocate. And what she's going to plan on doing is uh, making sure that we're still tied into the community. So our plan for year one is to um is to um, do our research for our locations for our properties. Also um, find investors for the properties. And also by after that the successful second year we'll have investors and we start looking through our tier two properties. Um, by year five uh, we plan on having a full functioning tier two tier one properties. Uh, we'll be looking for um, are. We're going to continue to look for investors for our tier one and tier two locations and research for our tier three. And we'll, for our plan, by year 10, we'll be planning on having uh, full function locations for tier one and tier two, and also be researching, researching and uh, looking for investors for tier three. Mm -hmm. We'll open the floor for questions. So do we have any additional questions so far? I think it's just a really creative idea and one that certainly communities across the country need. Um, and I like the replication idea that you have built into this. Um, I guess I, I, I'm just curious about, you know, where you obtain some of the research that, that you cited, um, and maybe I just missed something, but you referenced Tucson being in the top third, but I didn't see Tucson listed on that chart. So, so Phoenix and Tucson. Okay, so you combined here. Okay. Yeah, it was right. a metropolitan area, mm -hmm. so it wasn't just like towns. Yeah, sorry. Oh, that, sorry. That was a little confusing. Well, it's just in terms of um, when you would start something like this, and I understand it's to be a for-profit, right, that you're going to build and expand upon. So would you start then in Tucson itself, in Tucson proper? We would yes. like to start in Tucson. Yes, we're specifically going to start in Tucson. Preferably have Tier 1 and Tier 2 here once we figure out, hey, this worked, this didn't, let's continue to develop this, then spread to other parts of the state and country. So I think it's a fascinating concept. I love the creativity in terms of your different tiers for different kinds of spaces, you know, big box, industrial space, malls. I have a hard time gauging whether how much of this is practical in terms of the following. So I'm going to give you an example. So your mall, converted mall space, maybe you build that into extended stay residences, compete with the you know, Marriott's Residence Inn and lots of other chains out there. Do you have any sense whether if you start with a mall that's not set up for individual rooms and plumbing and all that, if it's prohibitively expensive to convert that at, in such a way that you could actually offer it out at a competitive rate with those other places? It's the, just a broad question. Yeah, no, so I, I actually worked in tenant limitation for about four years as an interim supervisor. And so the initial cost, because you have to demo out that top floor and there's new codes and everything, but that's where the initial, that's why it's our highest, our third tier, the initial investment, the initial capital, is going to be a lot higher than maybe just you know saying hey you know here's a grocery store let's make an incubator space but in the long run it has the capability and potential to kind of have a lot more long-term impact and have a lot more long-term cash flow for our, for our company 
Yeah. Who is the left time? 35. All right, so you, you had mentioned uh, the city of Tucson pilot program. I also know that there's, I mean, it is a great idea. And as with many great ideas, when you start a business, there are a lot of people already doing that. So did you look at who else is working in this space and what their status is or what their success rate has been? So, yeah, so for one of the instances, um, for like a tier two, when we're doing the uh, industrial buildings, there's actually a spot up there in Tucson where I'm just going to keep going. Um, okay. Um, there's actually an industrial space up in Flagstaff, and what they have is they kind of have a like a full adult and kids style um, recreational place where you can continue to game through. So they have like throwing axes, and they have like Nerf gun wars, laser tags, and then they also have smaller like pool games that you can play where it's just like one little general area. And they said that they've been around for about seven, eight years now, and they're still thriving by more of those industrial spaces that are kind of wrapped around them. When you know there's just the separate buildings, they're buying more of those and then wrecking out some of those walls to expand from where they're at. 